it stumbled across this listing which has been updated now oh they posted an updated lineup of the pan night that's happening in Berghain at the end of the month i think that like the october 28th if i'm not mistaken and the lineup has been updated to feature none other than skrillex oh it's actually october sorry october 27th on a friday which usually the Fridays are usually a panorama bar only, which is the house room. But this time around, they're going to be opening it for Bergheim also, which happens usually on special events. So for the pan, for the pan 15th anniversary for the record label party, they're going to be having Skrillex playing in the main room. That's going to be pretty fun because if you've seen any of Skrillex's sets recently, especially the one that he did um, with Fred again and the other guy that looks like he hasn't slept in a million years, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was playing a lot of, you know, a lot of party tunes. There was the set that he did recently at Dre Molin Festival, which I was meant to go to this year, but I'm going to go to next year for sure. And I missed that one, but he was playing back to back with Flipping Blauan of all people, which looks absolutely incredible. I've actually got some clips of that on my phone that I nabbed from people's Instagram. So I'm going to probably insert that into this little um, section when I clip this up later. Now greetings to the world. But essentially, you know, he's a fun DJ. He can play the stuff that he obviously he makes, which you would call a version of EDM. Maybe it's like bass EDM. I don't know what it is, but he's also not averse to playing just pure party tunes. So it's going to be pretty cool to hear that sort of stuff played in Berghain. It's going to be interesting, though, because the last time that sort of stuff happened, when who? LSDXO XO was playing there he kind of upset a lot of Bergheim people when he started playing all that sort of like party, electro, um, I don't know, what would you call it? Euro trash, pop edits type of stuff, right? And people didn't really like it. Um, a lot of that, you know, a lot of that Bergheim Berlin scene are pretty serious and they don't really take too kindly to that fun Instagram, TikTok techno side of dance music. So I'm going to be interested to see how that goes down, especially when you marry up with some of the other people in the lineup, right? Who are playing um, the objects and stuff and whatnot. And obviously as well, you know, my favorite person, the person who kind of, you know, gave me the cold shoulder last time I was in Bergheim, but Julian Huxable these people you know you kind of expect them to play once say conventional dance music but something that would probably match up better to Bergheim than it would do to anywhere else so that's going to be really interesting to kind of see when it does happen so I might go and check this out but as I said before I'm going to go for the 14th because that's obviously an event um, that I really don't want to miss with the lineup that's on there but also it gives me a chance to go to Paloma Bar so I've got like two things I can hit at once so I need to decide if I can squeeze both of them in if I can I'll just jump over there and see what I want for one night and do like the thing that I've always wanted to do actually maybe fly in on like a Thursday and then fly back out on a Saturday so just come in and out sort of thing and see how it rocks because the Friday night doesn't you know roll into fucking monday it kind of usually ends um saturday morning and shit so you got time to kind of get home in the evening if need be or maybe i'll fly on a sunday i'm not too sure but i'll figure it out so let's see if i can go do it um, which would be smart which would be pretty sick to be fair because it'll mean that i'll be able to go to Berghain what like twice in one month i'll go on the 14th and i'll go on the flipping 27th so let's see if that happens but i'm really looking forward to it and then it also obviously reminded me a little bit of this recent feature that was on RA that featured the um, founder of Pan itself. It's a really good little interview there if you want to check it out. Bill Kuligas, I'm um, talking there to flipping, um, what you call it, talking to RA. I loved how he cut his sweater shirt here. I'm not too sure if he cut this himself or if this is like a, from a designer. I'm pretty sure it's from a designer, but imagine a sweater. And he's basically cut what looks like a half moon into the sweater and then stitched um, a t-shirt or some sort of graphic yeah i guess a t-shirt with a graphic on it underneath it 
it looks pretty cool so it, it makes like a pretty cool effect on the front so let's maybe read through some of this ra article and see if there's anything we can pass from it that may give us an inkling on idea on what we might expect if we go to pan 15th anniversary on the 27th of october in Bergheim. the quote when you engage with the arts in general there is so much that you can take i feel like almost a responsibility to give something back to it from my side oh that's a beautiful way to put it that kind of reminds me of when um that aaron bondorov quote the founder of a new york thing of the el wow gallery of no wave and all that good stuff i think he said like oh i want to leave my my notch on the creative timeline of new york it's quite cool in it and i love that also how he says here when you engage with the arts in general there is so much of it that you can take i feel like it's almost a responsibility to give something back from my side yeah um explaining that the impet the impetus for the impetus sorry for starting his own label in 2008 but in the process of establishing pan he took an unusual route shrinking the traditional approach of releasing works from artists who are orbiting like a centrifuge force around a specific sound music equally guess is just as erudite in speaking about artists like the breakout junglist near archives as he is on remy um Cuvez, an obscure french composer who plays the hurdy-gurdy if the first five years of pan were defined by an eight tonal dissonance and improvisation the next five were in enrobed in a heightened electronic influence capturing in its folds a regis post sandwall district collaboration concrete fence and russell haswell the last half decade is the most maximalist of the in previous two movements in that it uncouples from traces of berlin's underground and techno or uk club derivatives into sounds that seem increasingly impossible to place amnesia scanner cyberpunk new metal or marina hurlop stratified wobbles being the best examples that's a really nice looking crib look at mostly vinyls right yeah there's part there's vinyls and magazines on these shelves and some cds and books and stuff but i do like how it looks it's kind of like done in a in this nice oak grid sort of style of a shelving unit it kind of looks similar to stuff i got here but this is just kind of basic like wood kind of panels but this is just it kind of looks like it's it's kind of drilled into the wood itself so into the side of the wall itself so it looks really cool it looks like the home of somebody that does own a label to be fair do you know what i mean you're meant to have all these references lying around how so you're meant to be able to make great works um it's only one thing in my head the same passion i have for music is actually an appreciation of these creative ideas of an artistic kind that all represent culture i read books in the same way i listen to records oh i love that he's got some good lines here in it He's got some good lines to make myself seem way more intellectual and cultured than I actually am. I'm going to rip that, mate. I read books the same way I listen to records. I dance the architecture. I two steps to sketches. yeah I, I love this i love that. that's a fucking amazing quote i'm gonna steal that let's continue here he says i was always like i always liked extreme cultures he said in the podcast in 2021 so anything that was far removed from the norm and that had people express themselves freely in their own world by dressing up or creating their parties whether i like the music or not i'd be there first row because that was how i felt also trying to exclude myself from society that i didn't fully belong boom that's me but if anything I don't come from the part of being excluded. I come from the part of maybe feeling like I was not allowed to do things because I come from a very, you know, strict, you know, traditional African family and shit. So you weren't really allowed to go out late. You weren't really allowed to go and hang out and stay over your friend's house. There was sometimes we weren't even allowed to go to school trips. You know what I mean? Which I don't blame my parents for because, you know, all those allegations around school teachers and stuff and stuff happening with priests and whatnot. I'm kind of thankful my parents are like, you know what? You're not going away with any adults. No way. So thank you, mum and dad, for that that but when it comes to going out and expressing myself and stuff i had to wait until i was basically you know 18 and up until i was able to kind of start going to my raves and stuff and attending those things and what i noticed is that i would just go out to anything i immerse myself in the art world i immerse myself in the design world i immerse myself in the interior design world as a period where i was just going to these amazing like open house type of things where people would be you know sharing off showing off sorry their interior design in the homes that they had maybe showing off inspirations and things that they were working on whatever right i'd go and see those type of things i immerse myself in skateboarding i immerse myself in flipping um, techno and the dance scene the hip-hop scene um loads of things i just kind of went there just so i can kind of absorb it all in real time 
and it was a great experience i'm not gonna lie and i still do it to this day i love to just go to random things just to go and see what the vibe is like book readings all these sort of malarkeys and most of it's just because i was never really allowed to do it but mostly because i'm super curious to see with my own eyes i'm really one of those guys who kind of hates to kind of just go about what people say i want to experience it myself so if someone says oh this place is shit don't go i want to go to the shit place to see why people think it's shit it's the same reason why i've got this uh, you know urge to go and explore fucking munich because whenever you go to fucking berlin and you talk to somebody from the scene there they always bad mouth in munich and i know most likely will end up being like you know hanging out in a german version of fucking essex i understand but i still want to see it for myself i still want to go to these places and experience the scene for myself hamburg munich all these places and just go and check it out because i'm sure it's not as bad as some of these berliners are saying and to be honest Berlin's are super spoiled right they have one of the best nightlife scenes in the world so clearly if nothing matches up to what they have they just think it's shit when really it might be way better than what we have right I always say that one of the worst kind of regarded clubs in Berlin maybe like Matrix Bar or whatever right I don't think there's a single club in London that stays open as long as Matrix not one I don't think there's I don't think there's many clubs in London that are as good as Matrix, which is weird because Matrix is shit. So it's like that's where we are at. So people need to kind of temper <laughs> their reviews based on where they're at, and also understand that other people have different type of experiences, and maybe what is good to you or shitty to you might be amazing to other people. So let's just continue. Let's go on here. You see a cool picture here of Mr. Kuligas there. Kuligas poured over a typography and graphics in boss on sleeves, um, posters and presses and merchandise. I, do, I would imagine um, Mr. Kuligas' apartment isn't the best place for an afters, is it? He's got amazing, cool little trinkets and things all over the place. But I don't think he's a person that would openly open his house to like strangers to come out and afters that he just met at a club because it's a nice apartment and he's got so many cool things that drunken high people will just ruin by spilling stuff on or cutting up fucking kit on and shit <laughs> so in 2004 he moved to london and though he had a rudimentary grasp of english to get his ma in graphic design in university of creative arts and moonlight as a session drummer also organizing tours and gigs for underground artists outside of school four years later then he decided to apply his knowledge to start a record label he enlisted the help of his friend um, Rashad Becker and then mastering and cutting engineer of dub place and mastering the facility associated with dub techno found his basic channel um, Kuligas' first release was a split LP on his own electro acoustic music under his own um, early 2000s um, alias family battle the results were esoteric to say the least uh, duh, duh, duh. you see a cool picture here of Kuli Gaster and his t-shirt looking amazing again some cool I think are those sheets I don't know piece of typography maybe it's what you spoken about earlier again some great vinyl there on the shelf you just got a really cool house on it to be fair some great pan tape I guess for when you're wrapping up um, labels to send them out so um, vinyls to send them out um they continue here shortly after founding the label Kuli Gas moved to berlin the first winter was a minus 22 degrees celsius his arrival in 2009 coincided with the rise of wax treatment you know what that might be the same time i went to fucking berlin the first time it might have been around then it might have even been 20 2008 2007 so big up him oh wow we got a, we got a link me and Kuligas have a link here I just read on shortly after founding the label Kuligas moved to Berlin that first winter it was minus 22 degrees celsius his arrival in 2009 coincided with the rise of wax treatment the influential party thrown by dj pete and basic channels mark ernestus of the city's most famous record shop hard wax on the first sunday of the month Kuligas would venture into kreuzberg to the venue horst to listen to the crossover dubstep techno exemplified by shackleton apple bleem scuba shed and a potent calisan sound system caribbean food was served in the garden wax treatment's dedication to roots driven programming eventually became a facet of Kuligas's culture approach when he was invited by Bergheim to throw his own parties in 2012 that's pretty cool that's a short time in it from finding the label and being part of the scene 2009 2012 that's why I probably as much as I don't like I wouldn't like to live in that city that's why you can understand why people go and move there in it it does really give your career a bit of a boost that you probably wouldn't get in any other place the guy arrived in 2009 and then by 2012 he was already throwing parties in Bergheim 
crazy. Um, I've gone to several pan showcases since moving to Berlin in 2017. One notable night was seeing Amnesia Scanner perform live on the Bergheim main floor in October 2018. I remember the debilitating effect of the strobe lights and being able to wade through the frushing um, audience. Eventually, I too acquiesced to the sonic pl um, plugism. Um, then there was the post-pandemic open air in 2021 in Funk House, a remote cultural venue in the eastern fringes of the spree. Attendees backstage climbed onto the platforms on the side of the booth rouse interaction by crystal messes astute club selections that included jungle infected edit of ready or not by the fujis um kamik slow another label artist played his barbed wire reggaeton in the early evening of the boat dr oblique in the main venue is that guy playing kamik slow because imagine if you hear fucking bad bunny being smashed out in flipping Bergheim. Okay, it's not in the lineup, but imagine that. Oh, Yves Timor actually is. I'm looking forward to seeing what Yves Timor is going to sound like um, in fucking Panorama Bar. That's going to be a fucking vibe, bro. But yeah, I'll imagine hearing Bad Bunny ringing through in fucking Bergheim. That'd be absolutely incredible. I'm not going to lie. The quote here says, when you're supposed to evolve this identity crisis is because you're afraid of losing something that's going to ground you. Um, I think it takes a lot of courage to keep being curious and move on for sure. That's why I've been very resistant or resistant or whatever that fucking word is to post some of my pictures from my film camera because i feel like i take too long to develop them but then when i post them they kind of feel a little bit too throwback thursday-ish and i don't want it to seem like when i'm posting pictures from my film camera like i'm longing for those days it's just because i i just got them published i just got them done not because i long for the days or i miss those people for the most part it's just a t it's just like a snapshot in history but it does kind of feel like you are trying to relive an era where you were lit and now you're not lit anymore. So you're just posting these old things that you did to make yourself look cool. Well, that's not really the case, but that's the feeling I get. Again, it's all it's my own insecurities. It probably doesn't make any sense, but it's probably the same reason why I don't like to post too many of my books and stuff because I feel like I'm giving myself a little bit of a, you know, intellectual, um, you know, hand job by posting the amount of books I read and the stuff that I'm into and shit because it kind of makes it seem like, ooh, I read books, ooh, I'm smart. So it's like, ugh, I don't know, let's see what I do. The panoply of genres across the labels catalog. So that, that's a good thing about Pan because of the eclectic, you know, artists they're basically associated with and who have they have on their label. It's probably going to be a far more interesting crowd than any other night, especially if it being a Friday. Yeah, it's going to be really full. It's going to be full of fucking hipsters and shit and trendy folk. But it's going to be a much different crowd than what you're used to seeing in there, right? It's going to be a little bit more, you know, a little bit more vi variety. There might be a few more different races in there, right? <laughs> if you get what I mean. The panoply of genres across the labels catalog and programming comes from Kuligas' insistence on shedding the layers of his projects that no longer evoke the cultural zeitgeist. Whenever I tried to dig deeper into the past, I was met with resistance. I don't want to get into nostalgic. I love that about him. I don't want to get too nostalgic, he would say. Batting the air. That's something that Kanye would do also. So it's getting a lot of the fucking Kanye energy from this guy. Um, with a well over two decades in the music industry, he remains exploratory, um, not unlike the way that he floated across the subculture as a teenager. I've seen him front row dancing to a Gasolina edit uh, at the biopic-centric party um, end route at the closed studio's in Christmas party to a beloved ambient listen set by Quaya and a position front right for Dixon's Indivision Friends and Family Night at the Cartoon Brimmers Tower in Southern West Berlin. Okay, so he, he he's basically into all the stuff that I like. That's pretty cool. No wonder I've kind of drawn to Pan as a label overall. He's into all the stuff that I like. Like I've been to events where somebody's playing a gasoline edit especially a BIPOC centric party we've got loads of those here in London um I've been to I've, I've seen Dixon play many many a times I've been to some nice listening bars we've got a few here in London so me and Billy Kuligas are basically the same right but my label exists on SoundCloud his one exists in the real world <laughs> that's the only difference yeah he looks really cool man he looks really fucking cool so um i cannot wait to go to that event when it does happen the pan event there pictures courtesy of wolfgang tillman's which is fucking awesome that's an absolute flex to be fair to get a feature like this on ra and then to have wolfgang tillman's taking all the pictures is one of the baddest ass things i've seen in the longest 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 time so big up him and again pan 15th anniversary happening 27th of october check in or check out you know the deal check in or check out